Portland, Oregon police are now identifying the suspect in a brutal stabbing. The man accused of the horrific rampage on a Portland train, 35-year-old Jeremy Christian, made a belligerent first appearance in court. You call it terrorism, I call it patriotism. You hear me? In May 2017, a white supremacist named Jeremy Christian murdered two people in a racist assault in Portland, Oregon. Police say this man verbally attacked a Muslim woman on a train and that when Good Samaritans came forward to help, he stabbed them to death. The suspected killer only making it a few blocks before he was arrested. While in police custody, Christian went on an unhinged rant, making bizarre references to a country called Finland. The real Vinland was a short-lived Viking colony in the 10th century on the east coast of Canada. The myth of Vinland gives a lot of folks with this Germanic obsession a sort of authentic claim to North America to say that they were actually the original colonists, that this is naturally their land. But today, a fantasy of Vinland has become central to dangerous neo-pagan movements on the far right, in which elements of Viking mythology, religion and history are co-opted and bastardized to drive an extreme white nationalist agenda. Over here, I'm a Viking. We brought him over here. Come on, we got prior land claims. Constitution, that ain't... This is how neo-pagans pretending to be modern Vikings are fueling the far right and inspiring deadly violence. Die, bitch. Fucking die. Broadly defined, paganism refers to religious traditions that believe that nature is sacred and whose followers may worship multiple gods. And to be very clear, most people who practice modern paganism are not neo-fascists. But there's a powerful movement on the far right to rebrand bits of pre-Christian European religious belief, like worshipping ancient Norse gods such as Thor or Odin, as the original religion of white people, and distorting them to energize extremist movements. Their belief, for example, with Nordic neo-paganism is that this was a, a belief system that emerged naturally in those places that wasn't affected by colonization or Christianity. And frankly, telling the story that you're part of a warrior people with a god inside you is just a lot more energizing than just making political arguments. You can see this influence running directly from neo-pagan elements of the Nazi party to mass killers like Anders Breivik, who, when he murdered 77 people in Norway in 2011, named his rifle after Odin's spear. It's about a search for authenticity, about saying that the modern world is sort of decadent, degenerate. It's about identity formation. It's about finding something that belongs to them that doesn't belong to the rest of the world. And so they're trying something new. The outlaw is now an individual who has scorned the world and its golden calves. He adheres to the abundant explanations of natural law to inform his Velton show. Paul Wagner is the founder of a neo-pagan group called the Wolves of Vinland. Based in Virginia, it serves as a vehicle for Wagner's Norse mythology meets self-help program, Operation Werewolf. I run Operation Werewolf, which is a program of total life reform. Founded in 2016, Operation Werewolf offers a mix of fight training, inane self-improvement slogans, and neo-pagan ritual, all on a subscription model paid to Wagner himself. What a ritual is really is a tuning fork. It creates a resonance for us that we can then bring ourselves into tune with in order to make sure that we are in harmony with the ideas and concepts that we want at our core. The wolves of Vinland gather in the woods to conduct pagan ceremonies, including animal sacrifice, though very often their output boils down to workout videos and cringy juvenile toxic masculinity. Listen, why don't you go find a fucking big ass football player to wrap his powerful arms around you and fucking smash you to pieces because that's what it sounds like you want. It sounds like you want a boyfriend. Wagner's usually careful to pitch his ideology as tribalist rather than explicitly racist. However, the Wolves of Vinland have been classified as a hate group and the links to the far right are pretty clear. We long for tribe, strong connections with our peer group and families by blood or oath. When a group like the Wolves of Vinland refers to themselves as a tribalist, what they mean is that they want members to meet a certain physical requirement, but they also want them to be of the correct descent because they believe that only people of Germanic descent can actually commune with those gods. 
is the meaning a man seeks has always been, from the dawn of time, to join a cult of heroes. One of their members was imprisoned in 2012 for committing an arson attack on a black church. Operation Werewolf also happens to be the name of a covert Nazi military program in World War II. The reality is that they have a focus racist idea at their absolute core, and there's no way to disentangle that. And the core of those ideas is always going to be racialized violence. That is always running at the center of this, and there's no way to detach their, their quote-unquote ethnic consciousness from the violence that it pervades. Wagner's devotion to this neo-pagan, white nationalist ideology is literally written across his body. His tattoos include designs based on pagan symbols that have long been co-opted by the far right, some of which can be spotted at far right rallies across the world. Virginia State Police declared a local emergency in Charlottesville, Virginia Saturday. This is after violent protests broke out at what was supposed to be a white nationalist rally. <laughs> One of the most interesting aspects of racist neo-paganism is how it comes into conflict with white supremacy's other major religious impulse, Christian nationalism. You got a problem with what I'm saying? F all you Christians and Muslims and f Jews. God. That was Jeremy Christian again, recorded the day before his racist attack in Portland. While it's not unusual to hear white supremacists spewing hate at Jews or Muslims, hearing them threaten or criticize Christians is a lot rarer. Head of the Catholic Church is anti-white, anti-Western anti yeah. civilizations. Pagan nationalists define themselves strictly along ethnic lines. Their movement is for white people only. So the idea that people of any race can become Christian is obviously against everything they stand for. Replace all the white people that have been Christians uh, with Africans or with uh, South Americans or whatever, or Asians even or something like that. So it's very much about creating this sort of mystical sense of who white people are. And that simply has more traction for them because Christianity is a universal religion. Um, and so, uh, if all people are equal in Christ, it's a lot harder to have those strong barriers that say this is a particular people, they're separate, they have a separate history, separate heroes, and a separate moral life. For far-right neo-pagans like the alt-right influencer Lana Loctev, it seems that their main problem with Christianity is that it's just a bit too Jewish. And these are, these are things that are built into us, into humanity. Like, we know what right and wrong is. We didn't have to wait for, essentially, some Jews to show up in the desert to, to give us our moral us code. Morality. That's very yeah. insulting. It's very insulting. I think a really important point that gets lost a lot is the level of anti-Semitism that's implicit in these racialized pagan groups. They see Christianity as based off of the worship of a foreign Semitic Jewish God. This appropriation and distortion of pagan mythologies actually has a pretty long history on the far right. The Nazis heavily pushed neo-pagan ideas of a pre-Christian German identity in their genocidal ideology, and their elite SS corps used reimagined versions of ancient runes in its iconography and based its initiation ceremonies on reconstructed pagan rituals. There's this long history of using these symbols going back to Nazi Germany and the appropriation of runic symbols. There are still observable patterns that we see. Symbols, statements, iconography, that continues to surface and pop up in extremely important and terrifying situations. Much of these neo-pagan fascist movements are based less on deep historical knowledge of medieval Scandinavian society and more on cartoonish representations of Vikings in popular culture. Part of this turn to both white supremacy and neo-paganism is trying to reassert some sort of meanings. They want some sort of glory narrative about themselves. They want to feel important in certain ways. What racist Nordic paganism gives people is an emotional, spiritual, philosophical weight to these racist ideas. It's what's necessary to make these ideas take hold in people's lives. It's what's necessary to help them build a history and a sense of themselves. But it's very clear what their ideas actually do. And you can see the effect that these ideas have had on the white nationalist movement and on the people involved. And I think it's a straight line to acts of violence.